God good, wonderful God. Amen. This morning we have someone new that some of you may not have seen before. Ryan, if you will, go ahead and come on up. Uh, Ryan is going to be serving a one-year internship here with us, and he's coming to be trained and mentored, and he'll be working more directly with our youth. And, uh, and so he arrived here this week. This is his first week here with us. And uh, I'm just excited about what God is doing. Amen? Is anybody excited about what God is doing? I believe that God is raising up young people that have a heart and a desire for God. And uh, I've known Ryan and his family for several years now, and I've, I've watched him grow through you know, the last few years, and, and uh, I've seen him develop, and, and he has a heart for God, and he has a heart he wants to, to preach, and he, he has a heart for the ministry. That's his desire is to, to, to one day be you know, active and fully involved in ministry, in which you know, we're setting that path right now. Things are happening. And I'm just excited for what God is going to do through Ryan here in this congregation. And we're going to see him grow and we're going to see us grow through him. And, and ultimately it's through the grace and through the power of God. And so I want him to just take just a moment to introduce himself and to just share just for a couple moments what's on his heart this morning. Can we, can we give him a hand clap? Amen. Uh, just... Just like last night, I want to say from the very beginning is I want to say thank you to you guys. It's been an awesome week so far, and I just I, I can't be more happy than I am than I was back at home. I mean, it's just kind of cool being out on my own and seeing what God's starting to do with me and all the doors that are starting to open up with it. And just kind of wanted to share with you guys what my heart is, and I shared it a little bit last night. But uh, the reason I I feel like that I'm called to the youth is because one I love to see them smile. I I, I love to see kids. I love to see see them smile and just be happy and worship God. That that's that's my joy to see to see that happen from 12 years old up to my age. I mean anybody really. I, it, it's just awesome to see somebody worship and to see somebody be on fire for God. And I kind of shared last night that I, this past summer I went to Africa and found out exactly who I was and I wanted to share with everybody with this youth group like I did with mine you do not have to go over 17,000 miles to be able to figure out who you are you can find out exactly who you are here even though I, I went to Africa and found out I told them this morning I said guys there, there is no reason for you to have to go all the way to Africa to figure out exactly who you are and who you're called to be and that's my heart is for them to be able to find that out and for them to excel in it and that's why I'm here, and that's what I want to see happen with these guys. So I want to say thank you, and thank you for your hospitality and everything. And I love you guys already. So, Amen. Ryan has a great heart, and I believe he's going to add to our ministry here. And I'm, I'm just really excited about what God is doing. Amen. We had a powerful youth service last night. Uh, I mean, just a mighty. You, you would have had to have been here to understand it. Uh, I mean, just a, we, we really had a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. I, that, that's what I want. I want power. I'm, I'm not interested in anything. I'm not interested in religion. Uh, I could really care less about religion. Uh, I, I don't even like the word religion. Uh, you know, we talk about, well, that person was, was, is a real religious person. Well, you need to get the religion out of you and uh, get in relationship with who he is. And religion hung Jesus on the cross. And religion will take you to hell. And religion gets you nowhere except for maybe in a burning flame of fire. And uh, we, we need relationship with Jesus. It's relationship that's going to set somebody free. Religion won't do it. I, I don't care what religion it is, what faith. Uh, religion is just a, a mindset. And uh, we, if we become bound by religion... We are dead in our tracks with Jesus. God expects relationship with us. And uh, last night, we had a, a mighty move of, of God. God showed up, and I mean, it was just powerful. We had, a, I guess we went for two and a half hours. Uh, our service was probably two and a half hours long. Youth seeking the Lord, one filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I mean, just powerful. I mean, I, I can't think of a better 
I mean, when you show up and you see youth on a Saturday night coming to church to worship God, that, that alone just makes you happy. Uh, they're not out somewhere else doing something else. They were in the house of God. We sang that song last night, There's No Place That I Would Rather Be. You know, you, you think about the words to that song. As we were singing that last night, I thought, you know, these youth could be anywhere and everywhere. I mean, they don't have to be here on a Saturday night. Saturday night. But I am so thankful that they were. And I mean, we just had a tremendous service, and God showed up, and, and just some mighty things are happening in our presence. And I, I believe God's right, raising up a young army, a a youthful army that's going to bring uh, liberty and bring freedom to this generation. Amen. Uh, we, we, need, we need young men to rise up like Byron and Ryan. And we, we need them to rise up and to touch this generation because they can do things that I can't do and you can't do. They can affect and touch the lives of those that are in their age group, in their age bracket. Amen. And so, so I'm just excited about what God is doing and, and what God is doing in our, in our day and time today. And I, I just believe great things are happening. I, I just can't talk about it enough. I, I don't want to, you know, overemphasize, but, but I just believe that greater things are happening. I, I believe this youth service that we've got going is, is just going to really grow and enlarge. And uh, we had 65 people in our first one. We had pushing 100 last night. And... You know, it's not all about numbers, but, you know, every number represents a soul. And I hear people say, well, it's not about the numbers. Well, it's not all about the numbers, but we have to have people in order to, in order to set people free. I, I mean, I don't want to be up here preaching to empty seats. That's, that's not going to do anything. Uh, we, we have to have people. So while numbers aren't all together the most important thing, that, that's usually people that are real small and, you know, that are not interested in numbers, but, but, but every, per, every number represents a soul. And I'm excited about souls. I, I'm excited to see people being set free. I'm excited about seeing bondages be broken. I'm about seeing God's liberty come into people's lives and the anointing of God setting people free and breaking yokes. The Bible said that it is the anointing that breaks the yokes. And so if the anointing is not in it, then I am not interested in it because it's the anointing that's going to set people free and bring liberty and freedom to the lives of people. Amen. We're going to go this morning right into the Word of God in 2 Kings chapter number 3. And we're going to begin reading in verse number 17. How many of you know that breakthrough is coming? Breakthrough is coming. It's not time for break. It's, it's time for breakthrough, but breakthrough is coming into some people's lives. You may have remembered about a year ago I preached a message entitled Digging Ditches. And how that digging ditches is hard work and, and digging ditches is not an easy job and that it's a, you know, a labor-type job and not, it's, it's not just something that is easy to do. But digging ditches is a difficult job. Well, this morning I want to talk about the ideal that breakthrough is coming. Let us turn to the book of 2 Kings chapter number 3. We're going to begin reading in verse number 17. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see the wind, nor shall you see the rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and shall cut down every good tree, and stop up every spring of water, and every ruin, every good piece of land with stones. And now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. Can everybody say, breakthrough is coming? I'm not going to read the entire story this morning because it's too lengthy to read, but there were three kings, and one of them were by the name of Jer 
Jehoram. I'm not going to mention all their armies, but the animals found themselves in a very desperate situation. They had been in the wilderness and they were there with no water and they had spent several days, or in fact it was seven days, and they had no water. Now how many of you understand that when there is no water, you are in a dilemma? Because we have to have water in order to live. It's not a luxury. It's not a luxury at all. It is necessary in order to sustain life. Water is a must. Without water, you die. And so the king of Israel starts blaming God for the dilemma in which they were in. You see, this king was a bad influence. You know, sometimes the biggest problem of our life is the friendship circle that we associate with. Listen to me this morning. Wrong associations. If I'm trying to build my life in the presence and the power of God, I've got to get myself in the right friendship circle of those that are going to encourage me, those that are going to build me up, and those that are going to help me in my life. In, 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 in just a scenario, if I'm, if I'm going through something in my life and maybe I'm going through a, 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 a time of depression, I'm going through some things in my life, I don't want to fill my circle with those that are going to discourage me and try to bring me down in my life, but I want to get into a circle of those that are going to encourage me and lift me up out of the pit in which that I'm in. I have to gather a circle of friendship. You need to refine your friendship circle and eliminate all the whiners and complainers and sift out all the doubters and the powders in your life. Some people will drain your energy. They will drain every positive thing out of your life. I don't have time for somebody that's going to bring discouragement to me and, and tell me why everything won't work and why everything won't succeed and, and why this won't work and why this won't happen. I want to fill myself in friendship circle with those that are going to say, hey, you can do it, you can succeed, you won't be a failure, but you are going to rise to become everything that God has called you to be. You see, wrong associations will kill you and they will kill your joy and they will kill your vision and they will kill your passion and they will kill your faith. Listen to me. Wrong associations will kill you, they will kill your joy, they will kill your vision, they will kill your passion, and they will kill your faith. If, I hadn't been, if it hadn't been for King Jehoshaphat who knew the power of a word from God, they would have all died in the wilderness. But King Jehoshaphat asked, is there not a prophet in the land that we may inquire of the Lord? You see, you need to surround yourself with people who would walk a distance in order to find something from God. You need to put yourself in a circle of those that would go the extra mile just to hear a word from God because they know that one word from God can change their world. You see, I'm prophesying to somebody today that needs to take action from the Word of God that is going to bring the drought of a dry season and is going to shift you into the abundance and the overflow of Jesus Christ and He's going to shift you in to a new season. God is a God of breakthrough. God is a God of the turnaround. And here they are in a wilderness that is dry. And it's a desert. It's a valley place. And it's a low place. It's a place that this low, dry, desert place, the Word of God says unto them in a few verses earlier that I preached on some time back that now you've got to begin to dig some ditches. And I don't want to go back and re-preach that. But, but, but the fact is, is that sometimes in your life, you get to a position where you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to dig some ditches. And you're going to have to dig your way through the situations in your life. So here they are in a wilderness. 
It was hard, slow, and difficult work. No doubt their hands were bleeding and their backs were sore and their arms were aching and their shoulders were aching. And to top it off, their thirst was becoming unbearable. I'm talking to some people right now who have been in a dry place in your life. That dry place is where everything is hard. It's difficult. It takes a great amount of effort. You have to force yourself sometime to lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Sometimes you have to force yourself to get down on your knees before God in prayer. Sometimes you have to force yourself to get out God's Word and to begin to read the the Bible. Sometimes you have to force yourself to go to church and it feels like you're dry and it feels like you're empty and it feels like your mind is saying that this is ridiculous and that the devil is telling you that it's not worth it and it feels like you should just throw up your hands and that you should quit. I'm speaking to somebody this morning that is saying I am in a desert. I am in a wilderness but I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on on walking. I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm going to keep on going forward in my relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, the devil is trying to tell you it's over. The devil is trying to tell you it's dead, that it's never going to happen. Those dreams and those visions Those prophecies are never going to come to pass. You're never going to launch that ministry. You're never going to see your children saved. You're never going to get out of debt. And when you look at the present situation and you're feeling what you're feeling, the temptation is to agree with Him. But somebody needs to make up in your mind this morning that you are going to hold on to your promise. And you're going to hold on to that prophecy that you've been given. And you're going to hold on to that vision that is in your life. And you're just going to keep on digging. And you're just going to keep on pressing. And you're just going to keep on marching. And you're just going to keep on moving forward because one step with God, you are making progress. You are moving forward. Don't take one step forward and two steps back. Sometimes you might take two steps forward and find yourself making one step backward. But the fact is, is that you are still making progress in God. You just keep walking and you just keep on moving. You see, I know it's hard work. I know it's difficult. I know sometimes it doesn't make sense. I know sometimes you don't feel like doing it. But the fact is you've got to keep on doing it. You might be in the biggest, greatest drought season of your life. It might look like everything around you is dried up. But the only way to get through it this morning is to keep on moving and to keep on digging and to keep on praying and to keep on praising and to keep on sowing and to keep on coming to church and keep on sowing into your life. Can you give Him praise? What do you do when you're going through the fire? You just keep on walking. What do you do when you're going through the heartache and the enemy is closing in on you? You just keep on walking. What do you do when you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death? You just keep on walking. What you don't realize is that you are building a place for God's blessings in your life. You are the one who determines how deep and how wide His provisions and His glory and His anointing is in your life life you get to determine that you see you are receiving the capacity to receive a greater glory to receive a greater power to receive a greater anointing to receive a greater blessing than you have ever had in your life I know the devil meant it to kill you I know that the devil meant it to cause you to drift away from God I know that he meant it to convince you that it was a hopeless situation I know that it's been hard I know that it's been dry I know that you felt like that everybody is throwing dirt in your face but I came to tell you this morning that it's a setup it's a 
is set up from God because God is getting ready to flip the script in your life and you're getting ready to see the fruits of the labor that you have put in. God is not unrighteous. He does not forget about you. He does not forget about your labor of love. The Bible said, Be you not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint. This is somebody's season this morning. It's a new season. It's a season of power. It's a season of prosperity. It's a season like Elijah said. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I believe this morning that somebody is picking it up in the Spirit. Somebody has just caught the sound of the abundance of the rain in the Spirit. I came to this house this morning not just to preach, but to prophesy into somebody's life the anointing to tell somebody that the drought is over in your life. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new, it's a new season. It's a new day in your life. Can we give God praise? May not be talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody. There is somebody that is listening to me who has been in a dry place. And it seems like the heavens are of brass. Feels like it hasn't rained in a while. And it feels like that God hasn't moved and, and didn't leave any forwarding address. But I come to tell somebody that the drought is breaking in the same place. I said, in the same place, right where the enemy said that it is over, in the same place where the enemy said that I'm going to destroy you, in the same place that the enemy said, I'm going to destroy your ministry, in the same place that the enemy said, I'm going to destroy your marriage, I'm going to destroy your family, I'm going to destroy your health, I'm going to destroy you financially, in that same place this morning where the devil said that it's going to end that you're going to dry up and you're going to die I have come to tell you this morning that in the same place you're getting ready to tap into a fresh anointing and a brand new supply of the glory and the power of God you're going to rise up with boldness Hallelujah, you're going to rise up with boldness and a new faith and a new determination and a new anointing. You're getting ready to go into the enemy's camp and you're getting ready to take back everything that the devil has taken from you through the drought. You see, there's a drought-breaking anointing here right now. I feel that somebody is receiving it in the faith. Somebody is standing on the inside, like it said in the book of Job, chapter number 14, it said, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and the tender branch thereof, it will not cease, though the root thereof wax whole, old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water, listen, through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth new plants just through the scent of the water it doesn't even have to receive the water just the scent of the water not the actual taste of water but just the scent of the water I'm gonna tell you ladies and gentlemen there is a scent of miracles in the air this morning there is a scent of revival in the air today there is a scent of a new anointing that is in the air I can't see the difference yet maybe but I can feel the difference somebody needs to lift your hands and you need to give God praise right now and you need to say I am a part of the new anointing Hallelujah, as we return to the music. No wonder the devil has fought you so hard. No wonder he's tried to kill you in the wilderness. Because he knew that if you ever got to Jesus, that you would not have a chance. He knew that if you ever tapped into that hidden power, that he would not have a chance that you would tear him up. The Bible said you will not see wind nor rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. See, someone here this morning needs to tap into the hidden power. The devil thought that he had you. He thought that he got you in a low, dry place, and he thought that he had you. I preached that message, devil, you should have killed me while you had me. 
You should have killed me while you had me down because now I'm going to stomp on your head and I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be. You see, he couldn't see any water around anywhere. And he thought that you were going to die of thirst. And he thought that you would just fold your hands and just fold them up and quit. He thought that you would just lie down and give up. He thought that you would have a nervous breakdown. He thought that you would get angry. He thought that you would become bitter and resentful and critical. He thought that you would just sit down and cry. He never counted that you were going to get up and you were going to become better than what you were. He should have killed you while He had you. Can we stand in this building? You see, the devil doesn't know everything. The devil thought you were shallow. He thought it was all surface. It was all about emotions. He thought as soon as it got rough and as soon as it got hard, as soon as it got dry, that you were going to turn around and you were going to run back to Egypt. But the truth is, I might have quit. I might have turned around. I might have thrown in the towel. I might have given up on my dreams. I might have given up on my vision. But I got a word from God. And I got a word that says that my season is changing. It's going to get better. I am a new man. I am a new woman. You need a word that says, that weeping may endure for the night but that joy is coming in the morning receive that word hallelujah weeping may endure for the night but joy is coming in the morning right now we're going to sing and we're going to praise and we're going to worship God for just a few moments receive the word that God has given this morning let's praise Him Lord we're your children and we are asking for you to send the fire. Our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty. We need to feel your power, just like the prophet said it would be. In the last days, in our pouring, we'd see. And we are waiting, we're anticipating. Lord, won't you send the Holy Ghost down? Send it on down. Send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, we're your children, and we are asking for you to send the fire. Our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty. We need to feel your power, just like the prophet said it would be. In the last days, in our pouring, we would see. And we are waiting, we're anticipating. Lord, won't you send the Holy Ghost down? Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Somebody needs to start praising God right now. We need a release in here. We need a release right now in freedom. I feel bondages right now holding people back. You're not releasing in the Spirit. You need to start praising Him like the walls of debt have fallen. You need to start praising Him like your marriage is already restored. You need to start praising Him like the sickness in your body is already healed. You need to start praising Him like those children that you've been praying for to be saved. That they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and they're going to be working in church. You need to start praising Him like the doors of opportunity have already swung open. You need the anointing. Somebody needs to break through right now. You need to break through to the power. You need to tap into the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to tap into the power that is in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Let's praise Him. I feel the rain. feel the rain. I feel it falling down on me. Feel the rain. Feel the rain. I feel it falling down on me. It's the former and the latter rain together. I'm not talking about.
about the weather. It's the Holy Ghost rain that is falling down on me. It's the rain. It's the rain. I feel it falling down on me. It's the rain. It's the rain. said I hear the sound of the abundance of rain you know something there's healing in the rain there's deliverance in the rain there's miracles in the rain there's breakthrough in the rain there's joy in the rain there's a new season in the rain Israel Holt wrote a song he said it's a new season it's a new day it's a season of power and prosperity it's a season of anointing that we're in you see God loves you and God wants your needs to be met this morning but he has bigger things in sight for your life God doesn't want to just meet your need but God wants to rescue you and God wants to deliver you God wants you to be so filled up and so fired up and so powered up and that you can be able to stand up and make the devil sorry that he ever bothered you God said I'm going to give you water I'm not only going to quench your thirst but I'm going to meet your need I'm going to deliver you I'm going to set you free hallelujah there is power in the rain let's sing that again I feel the rain feel the rain I feel the rain feel the rain feel it falling down on me feel the rain feel the rain feel the rain feel the rain I feel it falling down on me it's the former and the latter rain together I'm not talking about the weather it's the Holy Ghost rain and it's falling down on me I feel the rain feel the rain I feel the rain are open this morning. Amen. These altars are open this morning. If you have something in your life and you say, I need to turn it over to God. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus into your life. Maybe you say this morning that I'm not where I need to be with Jesus. I want to give this, this altar an opening this morning for you to come and to give your heart to God, to give it to Him this morning. You say, I'm not where I need to be. This is the day that God can bring freedom into your life. God can set you free in the name of Jesus. As we worship Him for just another moment, I want to give you that opportunity today. If you say that's in your life, to give this, to come to the altar and make it right with Jesus. Hallelujah. 